Captain Beats. Another video here. And in this one, we are going to introduce alternative notation for the slope of a tangent line. Let's take a look. All right, so what we're gonna do is introduce this other notation, which is different than the previous video, because this new notation that we're gonna introduce in this video is also going to help us to find what a derivative function is. Now, we won't define a derivative function in this video, but we need the notation in this video in order to do that, which will be coming very soon. So let's just start by considering a function here, say y is f of x, okay? And on this function, we got two points. So p is this point a comma f of a, like we've been calling it. But now this other point we're gonna call q, that is the ordered pair, a plus h is the input value, and f of a plus h is the output value. So we wanna first conceptualize what that is telling us in terms of the two different points. And so to do that, <laughs> we have this little graph here to help us. And so as we can see, we got the point p right there, we got the point q right there. p has the ordered pairs a comma f of a, and then q has the ordered pair a plus h comma f of a plus h. Now you think about what this is telling us. Well, all we're saying is move some distance away from a h units. So the distance between these two locations horizontally is a distance of h. Some change in the x direction, if you will. And when we do that, when we use that notation, then the corresponding new uh, input for Q will be A plus H. And hence, when I'm at that input location, the output has to be the function evaluated at the input location, which is F of A plus H. So the diagram looks very similar that we've seen in the past. And in this picture, we can see that indeed, the horizontal distance from A to A plus H is H. And then the vertical distance between the two points f of a plus h minus f of a, the change in the output values. And then you can see the line connecting p and q here. Again, that is the secant line through the points p and q. And of course, we're gonna use that to help us define the slope of the tangent line. Now, before we had that other notation where the point p was a comma f of a and q was x comma f of x. Um, and then we let x go to a. However, in this case, because we have this new notation, we're gonna do something similar, but use h as the variable of change instead. So I wanna bring up a picture again here, dynamic figure, in that we see practically the same exact situation we were just looking at on the other screen. And so you got your point p, a comma f of a. You got your point q, a plus h comma f of a plus h. The blue graph, this cubic looking graph, is the function f of x. And then the green line is the secant line through p and q. And then of course we're interested in finding the slope of the tangent line at the point p or at x is equal to a. So that red line there is our tangent line. So we say, well, what is the slope there? Well, in this case, notice I want to change my h values. What we really wanna do again is let Q get closer and closer to P so that the slopes of the secant lines approach the slope of the tangent line at A. That's equivalent letting this X value A plus H get closer and closer to A. However, when we do that, equivalently, the horizontal distance, which is H in between these two X values, is getting closer and closer to zero. So if I may, I'm going to now let this point Q get closer and closer to P. And equivalently, the horizontal distance between A and A plus H is approaching zero. Hence, H is approaching zero when we do that. And as H approaches zero here, we see that indeed, the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line at P. Now, if I move over to the left of Q, because we're, or of A that is, we're assuming H is just some positive value, some distance. So if I move to the left of A, then we consider this 
a minus h, right? Because now the difference between these two points is still h. So from either side, as h approaches zero, the slope of the secant line is going to approach the slope of the tangent line, as we can see in this picture. And that's how we're going to use the new alternative notation here to denote the slope of a tangent line, just in a different notation way. All right. So having said all that, like we just said, and looking at that diagram we just looked at, we saw that as H approaches zero here, the point Q approaches the point P, and the slope of the secant line between P and Q, which is just, again, the change in the outputs between the two points, F of A plus H minus F of A, and then now divided by the change in the inputs, but remember, H is the horizontal distance between the inputs A and A plus H. So you kind of think of H here as A plus H minus A, and of course that gives H that horizontal distance between the two X locations. And hence, the slope of that secant line is this, and that is going to approach the slope of the tangent line here as H approaches zero, meaning the horizontal distance between the two X locations. It's getting tinier and tinier and tinier, and eventually the point Q will approach the point P. So that gives us the alternative notation for the slope of a tangent line for the function of consideration f of x at the location x is a is going to be equal to, well, everything we just said, right? The slope of the tangent line at that location will be the limit now as h goes to zero of the slopes of the secant lines f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. So that is our alternative notation. And we're going to do an example here in a moment to see how we can use it to find the slope of a tangent line. And then that will help us again, like I said, develop the concept of what is called the derivative function. So let's go ahead and look at an example. You can see the definition above just to remind us. We're going to use that limit definition of the slope of the tangent line. And now because we have two different definitions, Specifically here, we want to use the one with the notation with H in it, the one we just saw right above here. And we're going to use that limit definition to find the slope of this function G of X here, which is the square root of X minus 1, at the location X is equal to 2. All right? So that's what we're going to do. So, all right, let's just rewrite it. Slope of the tangent line at this location is going to be the limit as h goes to 0, and in this case our function is g, so g of a plus h minus g of a over h. Now, again, a is the location that we're interested in finding the tangent line at. So in this case, again, because we're interested in finding the slope of the tangent line at x is 2, that tells us that a is 2. And so we can go ahead and plug this stuff in. What do we get? Limit h goes to 0 of, in this case, g of 2 plus h minus g of 2 all over h. So we got to find that limit. Now, let's just go and find those values in the numerator here up on the top. g of 2 plus h, well, just plug 2 plus h in for x into our function. That's going to be the square root. 2 plus h, and then minus a 1, which is the same thing as the square root of 1 plus h. And then we also need g of 2. g of 2 is just square root 2 minus 1, the square root of 1, which of course is 1. So now that allows us to make some progress on our limit statement here. So let's write it again. We got that the slope of the tangent line at x is 2 for this function g of x will be the limit as h goes to 0, of g of 2 plus h, so that's the square root, 1 plus h, minus g of 2, which is a 1, all over h. And so, you know, as we can see, if h approaches 0 here for this limit, we're going to get an indeterminate form again, 0 over 0. 1 minus 1 is 0 on top, and h is 0 on the bottom. 
So again, we got to use some type of algebraic techniques, but we've seen limits like this before. And for something like this, the idea is to use the conjugate to rationalize the numerator. So let's do that. We're going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator, which is the square root of 1 plus h plus a 1 divided by that same thing, square root of 1 plus h plus a 1. And then what do we get from that? Well, this is going to give us limit. h goes to 0. In the numerator there, it's like a difference of two squares, if you will. Square root of 1 plus h times square root of 1 plus h is 1 plus h. And then a minus 1 times a 1, a minus 1. Over h times the quantity, square root 1 plus h, plus a 1. So you clean this up, the 1's cancel on top, right? This is the limit as h goes to 0 of just h over h times square root 1 plus h plus 1. And now we can see h's are going to go away. And we're left with limit as h goes to 0 with a 1 on top and the square root of 1 plus h plus 1 in the denominator. And now we can see that this is not of indeterminate form. We can evaluate the limit. And so we evaluate the limit. And let's see what we get. 1 divided by square root 1 plus 1, replacing the h with the 1 there. Uh, excuse me, replacing the h with the 0 there, should I say. 1 plus 0. And then plus the 1. So we get 1 over square root 1 plus a 1 which is 1 over 1 plus 1, which is a half. And there you go. That is an example of using this alternative notation uh, for the slope of the tangent line, that limit notation that involves now this variable of h representing the horizontal distance between the x locations of the points. And for this particular function, g of x is square root of x minus 1. The slope of the tangent line at x is 2 is a 1 half. Right down below, we have a picture to help us visualize. So the blue graph there is the graph of g of x, which is the square root of x minus 1. And then the red line is our tangent line at x is 2. And that line, right, this line right there, has slope equal to one half that we just found by using the limit definition, which seems reasonable, right? That is a line that is increasing, so it has positive slope, and we just showed this the slope is a half. So that's it for this short video, just introducing that notation and then doing an example using the, the limit uh, definition of the slope of a tangent line with that notation. And so from here, we want to continue with the similar notation and go ahead and look at the derivative very soon here. So that'll be in upcoming video. And until then, it's Math and Beats, and I'm out.